In this video, we will discuss the non-constant growth stock model. In our example, we will look at a supernormal growth stock that starts out at a high growth rate of 20%, gradually decreasing from 15% on down to 6%. This would be the situation like in the tech industry when a company first starts and is successful. To figure out the value of the stock at a time P0, right after D0 was paid, we first need to figure out various dividends and then the terminal value of the stock. So if the dividend was just paid D0 of $1 and we want to know the value of the stock right after that dividend was paid, we will first need to know the dividend D1 a year from then. That dividend will be D0 of $1 times 1 plus the first high growth rate of 0.2 or 1.2. The dividend the year after that in D2 will then be the dividend of 1.2 times 1.15 or 1.38. The dividend in year 3 will be the 1.38 times 1 plus the constant growth 0.06 or 1.46. We then need to know the present value of some of these dividends. The present value of the dividend in D1 will be 1.2 divided by C5, which is our required rate of return of 0.12, or 1.07. The present value of the dividend in D2 is going to be the 1.38 divided by 1.12 squared. We will then need to know what the value of the stock would be right after this dividend D2 was paid, which we will call P2. At that point, this becomes a constant growth stock, so P2 will be D3 over RS minus G constant, or 1.46 divided by 0.12 minus 0.06, or 2438. So that would be the, or the value of the stock right here after the dividend D2 was paid. The present value of that will then be the 2438 divided by 1.12 squared. So we have a dividend D1, present value thereof, followed by the present value of the dividend D2, and then the present value of the price of the stock if it was, pay, if it was sold right after the dividend D2 was paid. Summing up these two dividends and the terminal value, we get the value of the stock of $21.61. Most of this value comes from the terminal value. So if we take 1944 divided by 2161, we get close to 90%. So the long-term growth prospects of the stock are very important to its valuation. It is also interesting to examine how the dividend yield and the capital gains yield vary throughout the life of the growth of the stock. The total required rate of return of a stock is the dividend yield plus the capital gains yield. In our first year, the dividend yield will be D1 of 1.2 divided by the price of the stock of 21.61 or 5.5%. Therefore, the capital gains yield has to equal RS minus D1 over P0 are 0.065. In the final year, when it becomes a constant growth stock, this equation becomes true and the growth rate becomes the capital gains yield. Therefore, the capital gains yield, after it is constant growth, becomes 6%. RS of 12 minus 6% leaves us 6%. So over the life of the stock, the capital gains yield starts out at 6.5%, decreases to 6%. The dividend yield increases from 5.5% to 6%. This would be consistent with a high growth rate company, where it starts out initially investing more money into the growth of the company, and then over time, as it becomes more stable, it can afford to pay more money out in dividends. I thank you for watching this video.